Saturn Apollo space vehicle. Seven and a half million pounds of thrust at liftoff. 363 feet of the most complex hardware ever designed and assembled by man. Three men, men as human as any of us, rely on it to take them on a journey of over 600,000 miles to the moon and back. Their safety and the success of the mission itself is in many ways the responsibility of the men who take the pulse of Apollo. In 1962, the Missile and Space Division of the General Electric Company at Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, accepted a challenge, a staggering challenge from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The challenge? Threefold. First, assume responsibility for the reliability assessment of the parts and systems of the Saturn launch vehicle and Apollo spacecraft. Second, provide technical and management services to each of the manned space flight centers. And third, design and build equipment to monitor and check out the parts and systems. All of which had to be done to assure meeting the national goal of landing men on the moon and returning them safely to Earth in this decade. One of the men from General Electric who has helped meet NASA's challenge since 1962 is Jerry Smiley. What NASA asked us to do sounded simple enough. They want us to, first of all, design and implement a quality and reliability program. Next, they asked us to supply engineering services which ranged all the way from management information systems to the evaluation of crew systems equipment. They also asked us to operate a major test facility in Mississippi. And finally, they asked us to design and fabricate the equipment required to check out the Saturn launch vehicle, the spacecraft, and the launch complex itself. In other words, NASA asked us to supply them the tools to take the pulse of Apollo. Yes, it sounded simple enough, but General Electric, now a part of the NASA industry team, had to establish a facility in Houston, Texas to implement its spacecraft quality and reliability role through efforts which identified and assessed the problems that could affect hardware delivery and performance. As an additional part of its responsibility to NASA's manned spacecraft center in Houston, Texas, engineering services were provided which verified for each space flight the compatibility of crew, spacecraft, and mission. Another facility was built in Huntsville, Alabama to support the checkout and reliability assessment of the three launch vehicle propulsion stages. This work was concerned with such things as plans, directives, and the implementation of diverse engineering services. Careful attention was paid to control the flow of management and technical information to make certain this information flow was carried out in the most expedient and economical manner. The design of the Saturn launch vehicle checkout equipment was also furnished for NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. And still another major facility was established at Cape Canaveral, Florida to perform the quality and reliability functions associated with ground support. Launch control and checkout equipment had to be designed for NASA's Kennedy Space Center. To manufacture the checkout equipment, a factory was built and equipped in Daytona Beach, Florida. And the first spacecraft checkout system was shipped and operational in eight months. To assure operational readiness of this equipment, General Electric personnel were assigned to major Apollo contractors' facilities in Downey, California, and Bethpage, New York. The 
the overall quality and reliability technical management and program functions were established in Daytona Beach, Florida to assist the Office of Manned Space Flight in Washington, D.C. General Electric, working closely with NASA centers and the contractors having the prime hardware reliability and quality responsibility, provided assurance to NASA management of hardware adequacy. To apprise NASA of how plans and requirements were being met, specifications and methods of evaluating conformance were established. In order to ensure the success of each mission, potential failure points, which could cause loss of life, mission termination, or launch delay, were identified and evaluated. In Mississippi, 50 miles northeast of New Orleans, to meet the challenge of NASA, wastelands were cleared, canals dug, an entire industrial complex built. Personnel from the General Electric Company under the direction of NASA arrived who would operate and maintain the Mississippi Test Facility, the free world's largest rocket testing center. All of it only a challenge and a dream just a few years before. Here today at the Mississippi Test Facility, the first and second stages of the launch vehicles are programmed to demonstrate their readiness to perform perfectly during the critical first nine minutes of launch. successful testing and with the stages rated flight worthy, General Electric sends them on their way to the Kennedy Space Center. And now begins the flow of the Apollo systems from Mississippi on the Gulf Coast, California on the West Coast, New York on the East Coast. The systems arrive and are assembled to perform as the Apollo space vehicle. And here at the nation's spaceport, the objective is getting everything to work together. During this final period, the emphasis is on ensuring that the non-conformances, including flight irregularities discovered on prior missions, have been corrected. In the final two months before launch, Continual assessment of mission hardware is made and reports of flight readiness status are given to NASA management. Every system in the Apollo spacecraft is monitored, measured, and interpreted by General Electric's acceptance checkout equipment. Even the astronauts' heartbeats, their pulse, is checked by the equipment. The launch vehicle receives the same intensive scrutiny. General Electric's electrical support equipment through the control of test conductors receives and displays the status condition of the thousands of test points, telling instantly and in detail if the launch stages are operating properly. Other General Electric equipment utilized in launch operations include the propellant tanking computer system, 
a fully automatic fuel loading control system to ensure that all fuel tanks are completely loaded at time of liftoff. The final pulse is taken nine seconds after ignition. When sufficient thrust is indicated, the critical commands are given by the launch control and checkout equipment to release the hold down arms and retract the service arms. And the Apollo astronauts begin their journey to the moon. Even after liftoff, General Electric equipment continues to take the pulse of Apollo in space with GE 635 computers that monitor the vehicle's performance and calculate its trajectory and speed. At speeds of up to 25,000 miles an hour, the Apollo space vehicle races toward the moon. Three days later, two astronauts aboard the lunar module will descend to the moon's surface to implement their scientific mission. Once on the moon, the astronauts will leave the Apollo lunar surface experiment package behind, which will gather data that will be relayed to Earth by telemetry for at least one year. Making it possible is General Electric's nuclear power system called SNAP-27, the first power station on the moon. Their mission on the moon accomplished, the two astronauts rendezvous with the command module for the quarter million mile journey home. And because of another challenge accepted and met, the re-entry of the command module can be seen in color on television. General Electric, at the request of Western Union International, designed and developed a color TV transmission system to bring the first network color coverage of the Apollo splashdown and recovery to the world. The first installation aboard the carrier Essex was accomplished in only 16 days. Today, people in nations around the world see live television coverage of men returning to Earth after having traveled over half a million miles in space. Men who have been to the moon and back. General Electric personnel are continuing to accept challenges as they perform their vital quality and reliability assessments and sustaining engineering roles for subsequent Apollo missions. In the last 10 years, America's space program has created more new technology than was developed during the preceding 100 years. This technology in medicine, communications, education, and earth resources has resulted in benefits which touch nearly every facet of our daily lives.